good morning or good day whenever you catch up with this video it's great to see you again I am so glad to be here in the godly playroom threshold at First United Church in Wetasquin Alberta my name is Ruth Lomax and my preferred pronouns are they them I wonder I wonder what you need to help you be ready today we are coming to the end of a season and about to enter into another time and everything changes. <sighs> I wonder what changes are going on in your life. Perhaps it helps just to take a deep breath and to be here in this time and place. You might like to have a candle to light or something for your response time, some art materials or something for feast. And if you need to pause the video at any time to help you get ready, you know you can do that. But in the meantime, I invite you to do what you need for you or for your household if you're watching this with other folks to settle in and to be present. You might like to turn your phone to airplane or silent for the remainder of this time together. Part of our spiritual practice, which is what godly play is in part, is to be present, right? To let our attention center and focus here. And we are able to go more deeply into God's presence when we let go of some of those other distractions whether that's the phone or that to-do list that runs on loop in our brain sometimes, or just those little thoughts that squirrel their way in and out and seem to take so much time and attention. So take another deep breath. And whenever you're ready, come on in. Welcome into the circle in the godly play space. I wonder, were you able to get what you needed set up or to find the time and space so that you can enter into this story? Oh, I can see by the clock on the wall. We are at the end of that green and growing season and almost ready to move into the time of the color blue. I wonder if you remember what that season is called. And if you want to find this story, it's not on the liturgical action shelf story. And it's not over there with the parables. You'll find it along the sacred story shelves. If you want to find this story when you're in the room, you'll find it on the sacred story shelf next to the desert box. But it is a story that invites us to go more deeply from the story of the prophets to the stories of the major prophets, Ezekiel and Jeremiah and, Hosea and Isaiah and Elijah to the prophet Jonah. Hmm. So, are you ready for a story? This is a fun story. It's called Jonah. Sometimes we call him the reluctant prophet. Jonah had his ups and downs, so to speak. But I'm getting ahead of myself. We need to light our candle. I wonder if you have a candle, either a battery or a flame one that you like to have ready. We remember that once there was someone who said such amazing things and did such wonderful things that people began to follow him. And the more they followed him, the more they wondered who he was. And they just had to ask, who are you? And so one time when they asked him that question, he said, I am the light. Watch the light grow when it's shared. Hmm. 
I'm going to put this light back on the shelf so that it's not in the way of our story. And I'll see you back here in a moment after I get the camera moved for this story. Are you ready for a story? Here are the materials. This is the story of the prophet Jonah. The word of God came to Jonah. Arise, get up, and go to that great city of Nineveh and tell them that they are bad and they need to change and become good or they will be destroyed. Now a prophet is someone who comes so close to God and God comes so close to them that they know what God wants them to say or do and they do it. Jonah got up and he went the other way. He got on a boat that was setting sail for Tarshish in Spain, which is about as far away from Nineveh as he could go. When the ship was out of sight of the shore, a great storm came up. And the sailors were afraid. They prayed each to their own God and they began to throw things overboard that they had been carrying so that the ship would become lighter and they would be able to float better. Now a prophet is someone who helps others know the best things to do. So they went to find Jonah and you know where they found him? He was sound asleep in the bottom of the boat. The captain commanded him to wake up and pray to his God that the people might be saved. But all Jonah did was come up on deck. The storm got worse and the waves got bigger and the sailors were even more afraid. The people decided to cast lots to see if there was someone with whom God was angry. And then they would throw that person overboard. Now a prophet is someone who speaks for the one true God. But still Jonah said nothing. They asked him who he was. And he said he worshipped God, the maker of heaven and earth. And then the people knew Jonah was trying to run away from God. The storm grew even more troublesome and the boat pitched and the waters came in. And finally Jonah said, throw me overboard and the storm will stop. And so they did. They threw Jonah overboard and immediately the wind stopped blowing and the waves became peaceful and calm. A prophet is someone who is close to God and a false prophet is someone who is far away from God. When Jonah went overboard, he was neither close to nor far from God. He was sinking. And as he sank, 
a great fish came swimming up and swallowed Jonah whole. Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. And finally he began to pray. The fish began to feel strange. It felt more and more sick until finally it swam close to shore and vomited Jonah up on the dry land. The word of God came to Jonah a second time. Arise, get up and go to that great city of Nineveh and tell the people there that they are bad and they need to change and become good or they will be destroyed. And this time, Jonah went. He walked all across that great city of Nineveh and he cried out to the people that they were bad and they needed to change and become good or that they would be destroyed. And the people listened. Everyone began to say how sorry they were and they put on sackcloth and ashes so showing how sorry they were and they changed and became good. The king and the queen changed and became good. Even the creatures in the fields around Nineveh changed and became good. And God did not destroy that great city. Now a prophet is someone who rejoices when others come close to God or when people who are bad change and become good. But Jonah had said nothing and the sailors had fallen on their knees and given thanks to God. And now the people of Nineveh, that great city, had all said they were sorry and changed and become good. But Jonah was angry. And he went outside the city. And he threw himself down on a hillside. And he sulked. He wanted to get his own way. God said, why are you so angry? But Jonah didn't answer. One night, God caused a plant to grow and it grew up and it gave shade to Jonah. But still Jonah would say nothing. He really hoped he would get his own way. And then one night, God sent a worm and the plant died. And in the morning, the sun came up and a sultry wind blew in from the east and the sun beat down on Jonah and he was even angrier. And God said, why are you so angry? And Jonah said, I am angry, so angry that I could die. And God said, you are angry about the plant that died? When you did nothing to care for it or to cause it to grow. How much more should I care for the people of Nineveh, that great city of over 120,000 people and all of their animals? I wonder, I wonder what happened next. Hmm. I wonder what kind of an ending to this story you would write. The story in the Bible leaves us there with Jonah still sulking and the people of Nineveh having repented, having turned and become good. And Jonah is angry with them because they aren't even the people of God. And yet God was merciful. 
I wonder if you've ever felt angry like Jonah. I wonder what you liked best about this story. I wonder what the most important part of this story is. I wonder if there's any part of this story we could leave out and still have all the story that we need. I wonder where you are in this story or or if there's a part of this story that is especially for you today there have been times in my life when i thought god was asking me or calling me to do something and i have been reluctant <laughs> or grumbled tried to avoid it. I think there's even been times when I have been angry about how merciful God might be or sometimes more so about those times when I don't think things have worked out as fairly, mostly for me, but sometimes for others as well. There is a lot of wondering that goes with this story. You might want to pause the video and take some more time to wonder, or you might want to look the story up and read it for yourself in the Bible. It's actually its own little book in part of the prophets, the book of Jonah. Remember, we had the story not that long ago about the prophets, and Jonah was one of the 12 minor prophets. Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah. So you know how to find him in between Obadiah and Micah if you're looking. But I think for now, I'm going to put this story away. And you might like to think about what you want to work with in response to this story. Maybe you need a pen and paper to do some journaling or to script your own ending to the play. Maybe you want to just sit and play with some water. You'll know what you need. And there will be materials around your home that help you enter into this story in a different way than just listening to the words. So, we had that great fish. I wonder if the fish was tempted to go the other way when God said, go pick up Jonah. <laughs> and the ship that was bound for Tarshish in Spain, that great city of Nineveh, And Jonah. I sometimes think that story of Jonah is important just because it reminds us that God finds a way to work even when we put obstacles in front of God.
and especially that God is merciful, for me anyways. Though I always wonder how the animals in the field changed and became good. Maybe they didn't bite or kick or run away or crawl through the fence like some animals like to do. I'm going to get my things ready and I'll see you back here in a moment. So welcome back. I decided I wanted to do a little bit of painting. It's kind of the one water thing I could think of doing. So I have my cleanup cloth and I have some paint brushes and I got a sponge. Sometimes it's fun to use different textures. You can use like a crunched up Kleenex or a sponge or a golf ball or different things just to create different images or patterns on the paper. And I'm going to use the watercolor crayons. You might have just regular watercolors or you might have acrylics at home. I have some water. So let's see. I'm going to start by putting some water on the page. And then I think I'll start with a dark blue. Not showing up a lot. That's kind of the other fun part, right? Is that you can flick, which is one of the things I like to do. And I can even use the crayons just to just to line in a little bit. ever been out in a boat in stormy weather? It'd be quite scary depending on how big your boat is and how big the waves are. I've done a little bit of canoeing where sometimes when I'm down in the trough of a wave in the canoe I can't see what is outside. All I can see is water. That's a little bit scary. There's a little more color. I don't know if my sponge will mark up some of that or not. Maybe need a little more color. I wonder what the soldiers told their families, or the sailors, not the soldiers, the sailors. I wonder what they told their families when they got safely to shore. I wonder if they continued to worship God or if they changed. Maybe at some point they even met people from Nineveh. And I said, oh, did you hear about what happened? Oh yeah, that prophet Jonah, he came to Nineveh. I think I just like spatter painting. <laughs> I wonder if God does that with us sometimes. Not so much spatters us, but just 
scatters extravagantly love and care and wonder and then invites us to be part of it to think or to to make decisions because that's something else I kind of like in this story God doesn't force Jonah to go I mean, the story uses that language that's kind of command and directive. But Jonah still has a choice. And he chooses not to do what God wants initially, which doesn't turn out very well for him. It's kind of been my experience of trying to run away from God. I mean, it really doesn't work. One way or another, God finds a way. And it would have just been a lot easier if I just decided to do what was asked of me the first time. But we forget. Hmm. I don't know if I can make this one work or not. I get a few lines there. We can kind of pretend like they're the wind blowing. I wonder what God might be calling you to do. Or if there are people or a situation that's not going well and, and God wants you somehow to help things get turned around. Or to maybe get a relationship turned around. hard to know sometimes. It's not always as clear as the story of Jonah, what God wants us to do. Except we know that God wants us to be kind and thoughtful and respectful and help others. Maybe not to run away, <laughs> but to be willing to be present. Well, I don't think I'm going to put anything more in my picture. I think it's going to be an in-between picture. It's in between Jonah going overboard and being saved by the fish. And so the boat has already sailed off, but the ship hasn't arrived, or the fish hasn't arrived yet. And Jonah is lost under the waves. Hmm. So many possibilities about what could happen next. But I'm going to get my feast ready, clean up my mess here, and I'll see you back in a moment or two. If you want to stay working on your response, feel free to stop the video and take all the time that you need. And then come on back for prayers and feast. So welcome back. As we get ready to feast together, we often say our prayers. 
and I am extremely grateful for this warm place to be, for this room full of stories, and for you who are willing to be part of the circle, to wonder and create and feast and help one another discern God's will. For this and so much more, thank you, God. Amen. So I wonder what you have for feast today. I have a banana muffin and some water. It always seems to get a little bit dry in the godly playroom after I've told a story. And we weren't even in the desert. We were playing on the ocean. I wonder if you've ever been on a boat on the ocean. <coughs> I think the biggest boats I've been on have been ferries. And so on the ocean, but never more, not very far from land, like an hour and a half on the ocean, maybe, between some of the islands. But mostly on lakes and rivers and even those places, the waves can get pretty big. Some people really like being near the ocean, though. And that's one of the places many folks say they come close to God. I wonder where you come close to God. Hopefully it's not just in those times when things aren't going well or you're afraid, but hopefully there's times of prayer throughout your day or throughout your week. Times when we just stop and notice something beautiful or amazing or something that makes us laugh. I've started saying prayers for people when I see them driving around town with a grumpy look on their face. And I just pray that whatever is going on in their day, something might make them smile. And I am especially grateful that we are free to wander around and feel safe. And that people can go to the hospital and not be afraid. And I pray lots for the people in Gaza, on Israel, and around the world, any of those places where there's fighting and conflict and terrible things happening that don't need to happen. I wonder what prophet might come to some of those folks and say, this is a situation is bad and it needs to change and become good. Too much is being destroyed. We're pretty slow learners, I think. And I might not be able to do anything about what's going on in the wider world, but I can certainly do something here in my own community, in the way I treat other people, in the kind of respect that I offer, in the way I encourage people, like, don't just get mad, stop and think things through. You have a choice about how we have a choice about how we act in the world. To not just react, but to respond and to choose what we do with those big emotions that we sometimes feel. Which isn't easy to do. Jonah was pretty good at sulking. And I 
caregiver already a little bit sad or something upsetting has happened, it's easy for us to kind of get triggered or jump into being angry or lashing back instead of stopping, taking a deep breath. On Peace Sunday recently, I invited our congregation to do a really simple exercise, and so I'll share it with you. It's just to put your hand here on your heart, or on your chest, feel that warmth from your hand and your body, and then to take a deep breath in and to say something calming like, I am at peace. I am loved. I am content. And then to say those things two, maybe three, four times. Just each time you repeat them, taking another deep breath and feeling that connection between what you're saying and the warmth on your hand and your body. You can create your own affirmations. Those are those positive statements that we say to ourselves. We need to say a few of those, a lot more of those than some of those negative things that run around in our brain sometimes. And we may not always be able to do that out in public or in the middle of a situation, but if we practice doing it, sometimes all it takes is for us to do this and we feel that relaxation of when we say the full words and do it multiple times. Or we might even just need to take a deep breath and then we feel that calm in our body and in our situation. And when we feel that way, we're much better able to respond in healthy and good ways than to just get angry or to be hurtful. I wonder what works for you. I wonder what helps those stormy times in you or in your life or your emotions and thoughts. What helps you calm them and bring them some peace? you might want to find some other ways, all things that we can practice that help bring a little more peace, a little more light into the world. It's time to change the light though, so that it can go with us wherever we go. So watch what happens. Right now, the light is just in this one place and this one time. But when I change it, it can spread out and it'll fill this room. And it'll get so thin that we might not even be able to see it anymore. But just because we can't see it, doesn't mean it isn't there. So watch what happens. Did you see it? Some people miss that part. Oh, there is a lot of changing light today. And it's spreading out and getting thinner. Ah, and it'll be with us until we meet again. And so until then, God bless, be well, and look after one another.